Hello and welcome to the Ad Alice's educational video series. In this video, we're going to look at how to diagnose and increase quality scores. So we'll go through what is quality score and why does it matter, the factors that make up quality score and how to improve them, and then determine where to improve quality scores and how to monitor this information. So real quick, at a conceptual level, quality score is just a 1 to 10 number that's assigned to each keyword which is what Google believes how good an experience a user will have with your keywords, ad, and landing pages. One's the worst, 10 is the best. So we look at what does quality score do in your account. It's part of ad rank. So your ad rank is comprised of your bid, your quality score, and then your ad extensions. So when your ad rank changes, right, this can affect your average position, your actual cost per click, your impression share, and any combination of the three of these. So raising your quality score can decrease your CPC if you're in high positions. If you're in low positions, it can increase your position, which can then increase your impression share. So quality score is comprised of three factors. Ad relevance, expected click through rate, and landing page experience. Now landing pages and expected CTR are 39% of your visible quality score, and then ad relevance is the other 22%. So we'll look at the first factor, how to raise click-through rate. Well, first off, if you have too many ads by ad group, then you should pause your worst CTR ads. That'll push up your CTR and increase your expected CTR numbers. So for high impression ad groups, you should test ads within the ad group to increase your CTRs. Now, if you've got a lot of ads, you're looking at what across different ad groups increases CTR, or you're making ads by templates, then you can use patterns and multi-ad group testing to see what patterns users interact more with. So for example, this is the Ad Alice's account. When we look at an ad line like Ad Alice's voted number one PPC, that overall is used in 166 different ad groups and it's got a 2.59 percent click-through rate. Now award-winning PPC software has a 3.17 percent click-through rate. So overall for the ad groups included in this test award-winning PPC software does better than just voted number one PPC. And so this is not statistical significant data yet but this lends us the credibility that we should be looking at a different line overall. So when you're making ads by patterns, you're looking for overall information across different ad groups, use multi-ad group testing. And your very high impression ones, then test ads within that ad group. Now next we have ad relevance. Now ad relevance in reality, you can read about it from the Stanford paper, Static Quality Scores and Ordering. It, it's very similar to term frequency inverse document frequency. So what this is looking for are words that when they're in the ads have a tendency to increase the overall click-through rates of ads. So now we think about working with ad relevance. If we look at this ad group, we have three keywords that are below average, we have two that are above average, and we have four that are just average. Now odds are the three below average ad relevance don't pair well with the current ads for this ad group. So you'd want to move into a new ad group and write different ads for those. Now the other thing we could look at is those two that are, are above average. What are the keywords and ad combinations? Why is that working so well? So usually with ad relevance, number one is organization. Number two then is also testing ads because inverse document frequency is looking at what overall words appear in ads when they get high click-through rates. Then next we have landing pages. So think about landing pages, what Google's looking at is, you know, do you have relevant, useful, original content? Is the page easy to navigate? Does it load quickly? And then lastly, are users even staying on the page? So bounce back rates, often called long clicks, are when someone clicks on your ad, goes to your website, and then quickly reloads the search results. It often correlates to bounce rates, but it's not actually the same as a bounce rate is just a low quality visitor 
which could be a one page visit or under 30 second visit depending on how analytics is configured where a bounce back is when someone hits your website and quickly reloads search results. So we think about improving landing page relevance. So number one, if the page isn't related to the keyword, choose another page or adjust the content. Two, check your speed. Right? If your page loads slowly, then use PageSpeed Insights, which is a Google tool which can give you suggestions for how to increase your speed. Check your bounce rates. If the bounce rates are high, then adjust the content to increase engagement. Again, bounce rates, bounce back, not exactly the same, but usually strongly correlated. And then other adjustments can be making sure your page is easy to navigate. Remove excessive ads, you have a lot of ads in your landing page. Make sure your forms are simple to use. So what we often wanna look at when we have landing pages used in multiple ad groups is how does that landing page do with the various keywords that send traffic to it. So for instance, the first landing page in this list has six keywords above average, 149 below average. We'd wanna look at those below average keywords, say what other page should we send that traffic to? Or do we need to create pages for that keyword? And then further down the list, we have 14 more keywords that are below average landing page experience, but it actually is good for 15 keywords and it's average for 28. So we may want to, again, look at those 14 to say, do these 14 need a different page or can we just do a slight page adjustment? The rest are good, which could be an indication that you know, if they're the same page template, the speed's probably not too bad you know, for the site as a whole. And we're probably looking at just more content-based improvements. They are speed. Now, if we saw every single page had poor keywords, we'd want to make sure we look at things like speed as well. We think about where do you want to work on quality score? Number one is we want to look for high spend, low quality score ad groups. Two, we want to look for high volume keywords where our quality score has dropped. And then number three, we want to look for ad groups with high numbers of low quality score keywords. So we think about how to find high spend, low quality score ad groups. If you take your keyword data, you download it, you run pivot tables across it with weighted averages of quality score impression data to quality scores. Then you can use Excel in a pivot table with some weighted information to find where that works. If you're using a software such as Adalysis, it'll automate your priority based on your weighted quality score and your cost data for any of those ad groups. Now second, we wanna look at high volume keywords that dropped in quality score. So you can do this in scripts if you want, but remember, scripts often write alerts to another file. So you often want to make sure you're checking the file and that you're getting alerts for it. But don't get too many alerts or you'll start to ignore them all. And you can also use a system like Analysis, which will automatically tell you when you have quality score drops for high impression keywords. So then we also look at our data. We want to trend it. We want to see how is our data changing over time. So for instance, in this keyword, it started off with a below average landing page experience. It was worked on, the page got better. The ad relevance has always been above average. Now the expected click-through rate was average. It dropped, it was fixed, went back up, and then it dropped again. So we want to look at those CTR changes to see how do we get our CTR back to at least average, and then I do some more ad testing to get it to above average. So by trending quality score, you can start to see how your factors do over time and then correlate some of those times to previous ad tests, organizations, changing your account, so forth. You can make trend charts by either going into AdWords, adding all the sub factors, downloading the data segmented by time, and then creating the charts. Or again, ad analysis will automatically make these charts at the account, campaign, ad group, or keyword level. Either way, and you can see your trended data. So we think about our quality score workflow. Step one is to say, what ad groups need quality score help? And then for those, for your keywords in that ad group, is the landing page poor? If yes, they wanna work on landing page to decrease bounce back rates and increase user interaction. 
the landing page is good. But then we have to look at our organization. And our first question is, could we have better keyword to ad organization? Which generally happens if you see below average ad relevance. If yes, let's move our poor keywords to a new ad group. Then let's test ads to increase CTR or conversion by impression, which looks at CTR and your conversion data. So you're not just increasing quality score from a CTR standpoint, you're getting more conversions from your account. Now, if you look at your keywords, the landing page is good and your organization is good. Then again, it, it's testing ads. So at the end, most of ad group quality score improvements are good landing pages, good organization, and then ad testing. So as a recap, right, improving quality scores can decrease your CPC, it can increase your position, and it can increase your impression share. Quality score is comprised of three factors, landing page experience, expected click through rate, and ad relevance. So the thing about fixing quality score, right, the identification of fixes are ad groups in need of improvement. So these are usually high spend, low weighted quality score ad groups, or find high volume keywords with quality score drops. And then increasing quality score is look at your landing page experience, if poor, work on landing page. If you have expected CTR issues, then do ad testing in that ad group. And you can also look at your multi-ad group patterns to see what patterns increase click-through rate. And if your ad relevance is poor, look at your organization first, then ad testing. Now, if you're looking for some of these automated suggestions, ad analysis can do all the graphs, can identify ad group low quality scores, identify any drops in quality scores as well. So we hope you found this quick, no-nonsense video on quality score useful because increasing quality scores can have very positive impacts on your account from decreasing costs, increasing positions, and increasing impression shares. Thank you.